Hello, this is Dr. Kim jong Yul. Today, I will lecture about the terms of adaptation and compensation used in orthodontics. You know the meaning of adaptation and compensation. Adaptation is the reaction of our body to functional demands by the external environment. Compensation is dental velar compensation, in which a change in teeth or arch is made to cover up severe skeletal discrepancy. For examples of dental velar compensation, in a class 3 patient with anterior cross bite, the maxillary incisor is inclined to the labial and the mandibular incisor to the lingual to reduce the overjet. To compensate for this, class 2 patients with large overjet have an inclined maxillary incisor to the lingual others to the mandibular anterior to the labial, and an IMPI of 103 degrees. In class 3 malocclusion, cross bite of the anterior teeth is observed due to excessive development of the mandible or insufficient development of the maxilla. To compensate for this, the maxillary incisors are inclined to the labial and the mandible to the lingual. This patient's maxillary incisor angle 1 to FH is 120 degrees, and the mandibular incisor angle, O1 to MP, is 74 degrees. Next, we'll look at the term decompensation. U1 to FH angle is 114 degrees, O1 to MP, 90 degrees is normal. In this class 2 patient, if you move the upper and lower anterior teeth to the lingual side, to make the normal angle, the overjet relationship may be severe. Even in class 3 patients, if the compensated maxillary incisors are moved to the lingual side and the mandibular incisors are moved to the labial, the cross bite will be more severe. Let's look at compensation and adaptation from different angles. In patients with visual impairment, other sensory organs are developed, and if hearing is developed, this can be called compensation. Or to restore vision through direct surgery is an adaptation. Adaptation in the orthodontia is to make the relationship of the normal skeletal relationship. And compensation is to change the position of the teeth while maintaining the abnormal skeleton state. If the skeletal shape is classified into nine types, only skeletal class 1 and normodivergent skeletons can be treated with adaptation. Other skeletons are already abnormal movements within the skeleton, so only compensatory treatment is possible. Therefore, some doctors recommend surgical treatment. Let's look at class 3 malocclusion. Mandibular protrusion is observed, and as compensation, the maxillary incisors are labially, and the mandibular incisors are lingually. Treatment with decompensation requires more labially of the maxillary incisors and more lingually of the mandibular incisors. Adaptation treatment involves lingually of the maxillary incisors and labially of the mandibular incisors and the posterior maxilla is anteriorly and the anterior mandible is reduced. So in this case, orthodontic treatment through surgery increases. Compensation types are dental velar compensation, vertical compensation, and articular compensation. The dental velar compensation is said to have a difference in the angle of the teeth in the class 2 and class 3 patients. In class 2 malocclusion patients, some patients have 109 degrees of maxillary incisors and 87 degrees of mandibular incisors. Picture a patient has a large of mandibular incisors of 103 degrees. Let's consider the compensation of the anterior teeth as the compensation of the posterior teeth. If the maxillary incisor is lingually inclined, the maxillary molars will be distal tilted. And if the mandibular incisors are labial, the mandibular molars will be mesial tilted. In terms of the occlusal plane, 
it can be said that class 2 mole occlusion is compensated with a steep POP and class 3 mole occlusion is compensated with a flat POP. This patient has an APDI of 73 degrees, skeletal class 2, a posterior tooth relationship with a class 2, and a POP level of 9 degrees. The next patient had an APDI of 75 degrees and skeletal class 2, a posterior relationship with a class 1, and a POP of 17 degrees. Observation shows that the mandibular molars are mesial. Inclined, the maxillary molars are inclined distal to show class 1 posterior relationship, and the POP is steep. In class 3 malocclusion, as previously taught, labial of the maxillary incisors and lingual of the mandibular incisors are observed as a compensation. Dental velar compensation also appears in open bite and deep bite. This is whether the upper and lower incisors are over erupted or under erupted. Let's take an example of open bite. When evaluating the vertical height of an open bite, measure the yawn to lip line. Looking at the pictures of three open bite patients, the yawn to lip line of patient A is 4 mm, which is normal, patient B is 0 mm and patient C is 6 mm. In other words, Patient appears to have had the maxillary anterior teeth extruded to compensate for the open bite. And patient B does not appear to be compensated. It's the same with deep bite, so measurement of the yawn to lip line is essential. The next lecture is vertical compensation. This is class 2 malocclusion patient. Which skeleton is the more severe class 2 malocclusion? red line or blue line? The red line is malocclusion with severe posterior movement of the mandible. The vertical part is reduced due to the compensation of malocclusion where the mandibular movement is severe. This is called vertical compensation. Therefore, the vertical compensation of class 2 moves in the decreasing direction and the vertical compensation of class 3 moves in the increasing direction. How will the angulation of the teeth change when growing in the direction of decreasing vertical compensation? Perhaps the posterior teeth are going to be inclined, mesial inclined, and the anterior teeth will also be mesial inclined. At this point, the curve of Spee and curve of Wilson will become more severe. Class 2 malocclusion compensation is lacking in posterior vertical dimension and dentally steep occlusal plane. The next is articular compensation. Class 2 malocclusion condyles try to be located posteriorly. So try to move forward and class 3 malocclusion is opposite. Class 2 malocclusion compensation is lingual tilt for maxillary incisors and labial tilt for mandibular incisors. In order to treat class 2 malocclusion with adaptation, surgical correction is sometimes required. To make the angle of the upper and mandibular anterior teeth normal, reduce the maxilla and increase the mandible. The treatment that adapts class 2 malocclusion in MEAW orthodontics is to increase the reduced posterior vertical dimension and flatten the steep POP. This allows treatment close to adaptation without surgery. Prophet and Ackerman have presented a quantity to address discrepancy in orthodontic treatment. It is largely divided into orthodontic treatment growth modification, and surgery. The amount that can be moved posteriorly for the maxillary anterior teeth is 7M for orthodontic treatment, 12M for growth modification, and 15M for surgery. The amount that the mandibular anterior teeth can move forward is 5M for orthodontic treatment, 10M for growth modification, and 15M for surgery. Let's look at a case. 
mandibular protrusion and cross bite of anterior and posterior teeth are observed. This is after surgery. Good profile and occlusal relationship were obtained. Teeth and photo before and after treatment. The protrusion of the mandible, which had developed excessively before treatment, was reduced through surgery. Measured values before and after treatment. INB returned to its normal range by 3 degrees after treatment. However, IPDI is still a class 3 trend at 88. POP is still flat at 5 degrees and the angle of the maxillary anterior teeth is 118 degrees. And the angle of the mandibular anterior teeth is still lingual inclined at 82 degrees. Therefore, even if surgery is corrected, there is improve of profile, but it is impossible to obtain complete adaptation. In orthodontic treatment, we consider whether to use compensation treatment or adaptation treatment. Only orthodontic treatment, growth control treatment, and surgical orthodontic treatment. The important thing is to find a way to achieve the maximum adaptation treatment with only orthodontic treatment. In fact, adaptation only treatment is the best treatment method, but it has its limitations. So we choose compensation treatment that is relatively easy to treat. But even so, it is important to find a treatment that is closest to adaptation. Therefore, it is important to find the cause of the dental velar compensation, vertical compensation, and articular compensation of each malocclusion through the angle of the upper and mandibular anterior teeth and the angle of the occlusal plane. In this case, the first thing to look at is the relationship with the skeletal frame of each patient. Next, you need to set goals for orthodontic treatment, such as whether to increase compensation or decompensation. This is ultimately the goal of an individualized orthodontic treatment. Thank you for watching.